And welcome back to the Maybe Center in Tulsa. Now let's go to the starting lineup for their 5A state championship game.
back with tip-off from the Maybe Center when we get back to Tulsa. Why settle for the ordinary? Go for the extraordinary. Why settle for ordinary chicken nuggets when you can choose the extraordinary taste of Arby's Chicken Fingers? Arby's Chicken Fingers start with real white meat chicken, marinated and seasoned with special herbs and spices. Serve with curly fries and add a soft drink, all for just two forty nine. dollars Want the most extraordinary chicken fingers around? Head on over to Arby's and taste why it's better out here. Arby's Chicken Fingers combo, just two forty nine. dollars in our youth department at Mathis Brothers, you'll see the best-selling open-stock collections in the country, all at the lowest prices anywhere. Take a look at this special purchase from Lee. We bought all they had of this rustic pine group in a distressed finish with heavy hardware. The captain's bed for $1.97 features three deep drawers. We're back. Tulsa McLean and John Marshall getting ready to tip off the 1996 state championship game. Incredible pre-game introduction, don't you think? <laughs> well, there, of Hollywood status. there were a few mispronunciations, especially <laughs> on the John Marshall side, but uh, yeah, I love the lights. Uh, I love the lights. That was a really nice set. D'Angelo McDaniel, a sophomore from John Marshall, will jump it against Derek Taylor of Tulsa McLean. Take a look at Lucas the Geese. That's his Tulsa McLean squad ready to jump. Against John Marshall undefeated at 27 0. McLean in the maroon going left to right and they control the opening tip. Willis. Bobby Willis. Not to be confused with his brother Johnny, who may also see some time. Curtis Childs in the paint looking for someone to escape to. Willis puts it up short. Rebound McLemore. Joe Adkins lost it out of bounds off of McLean, so Marshall will retain possession. Joe Adkins trying to drive through the lane and lost control of the basketball. And as you said, the Bears will maintain the rock. Early action, no score. Heard. Long. Rebound, Pierce. No score. We just started the 5A state championship game from Tulsa. McLean High School against John Marshall High School. Willis over to Pierce. Marshall playing man defense. Ball goes inside and scored by Taylor. Derek Taylor with the first two points of the ball game, and Derek Taylor uses his size to his advantage that time. 6-7 senior set. Ball is stolen and put back in. Terrell Anderson. Half-court pressure installed by the Scots. Four to nothing, McLean. Atkins drives in, gets hung up. Got a foul charge against Taylor. Atkins will go to the line shooting two. See Derek Taylor is still moving backwards. Didn't have his feet position just the way the official would like to see it. Sends the Bears to the line. Well, Atkins can shoot the free throw. Best pure shooter on the floor today. Four to two, McLean. 6.35 to play first quarter. Tate guarding Willis. Stolen. There goes Joe. Joe Atkins, all four John Marshall points off the steal that time, created himself and cast in himself. Another stole by Atkins. Behind the back and he loses possession of the ball. Curtis Childs got it to Willis. There's Pierce blocked by McDaniel. Stripped by Hurd. Out of bounds, McLean will get it back. John Marshall turned it up at the defensive end. We saw the steal by Atkins. McDaniel with the block. They're fired up. Let me get another look at that block by D'Angelo. McDaniel will also take a look at the steal right here. Keep Ryan 35, Joe Atkins. Looked as though 
Bobby Willis simply lost control of the ball, but credit to Atkins for being in the right neighborhood. Taylor. Just misses. Got a foul coming on McLean. Pierce draws the whistle against Atkins. So Marshall will get the ball. We got a good matchup down low, though, Mick. D'Angelo McDaniel at 6'6 for the Bears and Derek Taylor at 6'7. Here's D'Angelo with the block. One of several we're likely to see today. Tony Hurd, the guy with the ball right there, has already signed with Oklahoma. He's a natural point guard. Bounce pass to McLemore. He quickly draws trouble. Try to get into Joe. He tries to dump it down low, and it's intercepted. Anderson has it stolen right back. Hurd wants to go long, thinks better of it. Inside the tape, long shot to Joe. Thinks, goes up, puts it up, blocked by Pierce. Rebound McDaniel, he's fouled. Wide open action, both ends of the floor. Team struggling to hang on to the basketball. John Marshall, though, with a good bid right here. Joe Atkins going up, but Pierce, as you mentioned, comes out of nowhere to block the shot. Rebounded underneath. D'Angelo McDaniel will go to the line. D'Angelo McDaniel rated among the top three sophomores in the state by Oklahoma Hoops Magazine. Six foot six. They don't rely on him to score much this year, but Tommy Griffin said next year they'll have to step it up on the offensive side. But this year they're more of an outside shooting ball club. to four. Marshall leads. Rebound Taylor. Saran Keyes has checked back into the game. I tell you, Saran keeps changing jerseys on us. He wore 22 <laughs> yesterday. He's wearing four today. Saran. In and out. Rebound McDaniel stripped away by Johnson. And we got a whistle. That's two jersey changes that we've got on the team for. Tulsa McLean, Terrell Anderson was 24 today, he's 23. As long as Luther Pegues knows who's on the floor, I think that's all that matters. Doesn't matter what number you are. Taylor looking to inbound. There's Turan. Irie went baseline and drew a whistle. This guy's only in the ninth grade. Take a look at him here, Mark. Six foot six. Yeah, but he's going in amongst the trees down low. Just not quite enough height. D'Angelo McDaniel coming across the top though to create the foul. That's McDaniel's first. First for John Marshall there. Well, it looks more like a freshman in college than a freshman in high school. Ebby Irie is how that name is pronounced. There's Luther Pegues. Coached the girls' teams at McLean for so long. Was the athletic director. Opening for the boys' job came up, and he said, I'll take it. And he's done an excellent job at the McLean Scots. Irene makes the second free throw. It's 5-5, five to five, 440 to play, first quarter. That's Hurd. Bounce pass to McDaniel. Knocked away, and Marshall will keep control. So far, Mick, Reggie Pay quiet for John Marshall with 423 left in the first quarter. He has been held scoreless, of course, yesterday at 27 points, but 19 of those coming in the second. Inbounds to Hurd. He's in the land of the Giants. Finds his way out of it, misses the shot. A rebound, McLean. Taylor cleared it. For Reggie Pay or Tony Hurd to go to the basket. Maybe 
center. Marshall, I'm sorry, Marshall's opened up an 8-5 to five lead. We were tied. We'll be back with more first quarter action after this. Marshall Bears against Tulsa McLean. John Marshall with the steal. Tony Hurd to Joe Atkins to Reggie Tate. And then back to Hurd for the bucket, the foul. He converts the free throw. 8-5 is your lead in favor of John Marshall. McLean in the half court. Marshall playing man-to-man. -man. Tate on Willis and stolen. He stepped out of bounds, however. McLemore in the 45. Tried his best, but he gets slippery over there on the side of the floor. And the edge of his sneaker touched the line. Willis, guided by Tate, inbound to Taylor. Taylor can't get it down. May have been partially blocked. Long pass to the quarterback. And Tate scores. Well, he was on the throwing end of so many touchdown passes in football season. There, he's on the receiving end. And a great pass that was by Atkins. Reggie Tate with his first two points in the ballgame. We mentioned he was quiet up until then. But he had contributed in other ways. Scramble. Marshall's got it. Tate slammed. <laughs> Just like that, he's got four tied with Atkins for the lead. Atkins with the assist. Well, Atkins was getting down and dirty, and Marshall comes up with the points. Marshall's in control, 12 to 5. There you see Luther Pegues trying to get his forces. Well, we were nodded at 5, but as you can see, Marshall on a 7-0 run to jump out to a 12-5 advantage. It starts down at the other end. That's D'Angelo McDaniel getting a hand of the basketball, and then short length pass and Tate will lay it up and in. Here's that scramble we were talking about created by Atkins, but Tate gets the uncontested slam at the other end. Take a look at the support network, some of it anyways, for uh, John Marshall. Field goal shooting. Look at the Bears. Four of seven, 57%. Scott just two of seven, 29%. Of course, many of the Bears' baskets from the field coming from very close range as well. That should be noted as we move along here with 3.08 to go in the first quarter. John Marshall up by seven. That's right. In fact, I guess both their baskets were a slam and then a layup. Those first two. Mm -hmm. Take a look at Tommy Griffin trying to do what Clyde Ellis did with the football team. Have an unbeaten and perfect season. of Atkins bringing it down. Oklahoma State, of course, hoping he can be a point guard in the future. Uh, Terrell Anderson uh, leading uh, Tulsa McLean to score with four points. Bumps into D'Angelo McDaniel, but uh, no foul call. Apparently the feet not quite set in the official's mind, but back down the other end, it's Anderson picking up his first foul. Sending McDaniel to the line. Thank you. 
pass inside the take. Can he do anything with it? Missed the shot. And a rebound grabbed by Anderson. And look at Johnson. And now they call the offensive five. William Johnson. missing and they got Joe for a rebound on the back reach in foul on Atkins that'll be his first Atkins and Tate back the team lead in scoring with four points apiece full court pressure by the Bears Taylor to Turan Tease back to Tease he put up the short jumper and he hit it He's fouled and will count the bucket. Grant T's kind of stopped short, popped it home, and had a hand on the wrist as well. Well, in a game of giants, the 5-foot, 10-inch kid hits the shot in the paint. Look who hits it over. <laughs> the 6-foot, six 6 kid. Had to put a little arc on that one, didn't he? 12 to 11. McLean can tie it up with this free throw. And that's McDaniel's second foul. They got the rebound and hit the shot. William Johnson. And McLean's got the lead. Eight straight by McLean. This team's been on a run ever since he stopped playing. Adkins going up underneath. And you can see the foul. It's going to be called underneath. I read. It'll be his first. We mentioned it at the outset of the show. Joe Adkins and his free throw shooting. Much admired, much desired by OSU fans today, that's for sure. Well, there was a little bit of irony yesterday because Atkins hit two free throws with four seconds left to force his game into overtime while his future college struggled at the line again. In fact, Oklahoma State's free throw shooting the worst in school history this year. Atkins supplied some of the best free throw shooting in, college, in high school basketball. Off the glass and in, nice play by Anderson. McLean's finding a little room right there in the paint in front of the bucket. 15-14, they lead. Final 35 seconds of the first quarter. And a pretty wide open first quarter with players well, man. These players able to shoot the basketball. They're only going here, maybe seven. Marshall has spread the floor. They've yet to make a substitution. Here's where the poise of a senior player comes in right here. Joe Atkins with the ball. Five seconds. Shoots a three. Air ball. There's a mix-up in Marshall's offensive set, but still an air ball from Joe Atkins is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. <laughs> he was talking to Tom Acklemore as if to say you didn't go where I expected you to go. And the event to one point, McLean lead over John Marshall. And we are at the end of one, second quarter, coming up next. We're back in Tulsa, 15 to 14. McLean has the lead as we just get ready to start the second quarter. William Johnson will inbound it from right where we sit. McLean has spread their offense out, creating a box on the outside and creating some room in the middle. And Mark, there's the numbers. That's right, rebounds. The edge going to McLean, 8-4. to four, And obviously that's uh, part of the reason why they're on top by one point. Turnover stuff. McLean with the edge there. That's something we're going to try and work on. 
Right, and the og &E power stats show McLean's great shooting percentage. They've rebounded. Remember, they were just two of their first seven. Michael Cooper's in the game, and that's him with the ball. He's the sixth man. They've taken McLemore out of the game. Heard. Thinks about a three. Thanks again. Nice bounce pass to Tate. He scores. Reggie Tate with six points. He had four in the first quarter. He took McDaniel out. He's leading the team in fouls right now with a couple. Going for a little more speed as opposed to size. Start of the second quarter. Grand Keys puts it up from 17 feet. Just long. Rebound Marshall. Hello. <laughs> Joe Atkins. Wide open to start the second quarter. You see the speed, though, by John Marshall. Joe Atkins ahead of the field. Takes the pass and just trying to figure out how he wants to dress this one up. Pretty good job. Well, at half court, it was three on zero. <laughs> and that's not good odds. The playing guards did a good job of getting back, but not in time. Taylor, foul. Taylor can do everything. An outstanding player at McLean. He will be playing Division I basketball. Being recruited by several schools throughout his senior year. Angelo McDaniel back in the ball game. Looks as though he might be called the foul, but they're whistling on Atkins. So Atkins now with two. And the same for McDaniel. Both teams now in the bonus. Fight for the rebound. Marshall's got it. Luther Pegues didn't like the call necessarily. for pound. I say Michael Cooper's got more heart than any player out there. Atkins slices through, misses the shot, fake for the rebound and put back. 20 to 15, Marshall. Terrific athletic move that time. Atkins tried to squeeze off a shot, not a very high percentage shot, but his, his teammate Tate rose to the occasion, literally. Keys dumps it outside. Irie and then back out to Anderson, who works on Hurd. Well, Anderson's off balance, gets the shot to drop. Let's go back down the other end, though. The last basket by John Marshall. Here's Atkins. He's got Derek Taylor in his face. And here comes Reggie Tate. Let's come off perfectly. the rim. Exactly. No fear of offensive goaltending. He waited. He was patient. And back down the other end, it's Anderson answering and at the line answering. Three-point play. 20 to 18, Marshall. Man-to-man -man defense being employed by McClain. We saw that earlier with John Marshall. Atkins misses the short jumper. It goes out of bounds. Um, first signal was McLean ball, and now the officials are going to converse. McLean still got it. Joe Atkins with a pretty good look to the hoop that time. Couldn't get the shot to drop. And the loose ball, as you mentioned, Nick, goes off the John Marshall Bears. Well, they've lost it. And McLean will get it back. Hurd had it stolen momentarily, never quite got possession. Full court pressure. Quite a few turnovers here early in the game. All indicative of the game of this magnitude as well. The kids really need about five minutes, ten minutes to get into the game and get the feel for the basketball and calm their nerves a bit establish some sort of rhythm. Cooper trying to front Anderson, and Anderson will have no part of it. A little bit of slugging going on there. Lost inside. Scramble. Taylor comes up with it. 
goes baseline, spins, blocked from behind, they call the foul. I'll tell you something, Derek Taylor didn't get the basket, but you see the type of athleticism he has and employs down in the low post. Very comfortable taking shots, really from a wide range down low. Take a look Spin at it here. And McDaniel picks up his third foul. A lot of ball, but he may have bumped him on the head and shoulders from behind. Taylor 0 for 2 last time down, though. McDaniel's out of the ball game. Damon Mitchell checking in. Another good sized ball player. You lose about two inches, but you may gain some in the weight department. Taylor will try again. Well, he can't buy a free throw at this juncture. Almost stolen, but Atkins comes up with the loose ball. Long pass to Cooper. No basket, foul. Michael Cooper with only two points yesterday, Nick. Obviously, a cut point guard, a six man that contributes in other ways. This time, we get a chance to go to the line. The foul is going to be on Derek Taylor. That's his second. He'll have to come out. That'll put him out of the ball game. So we're seeing a smaller lineup employed by both teams now. Foul trouble being the main reason. Eddie Irie comes in with Taylor. He's the outstanding freshman as Cooper hits the first free throw. Twenty-two to eighteen. He's in trouble and unloads it to Willis. Great play by Cooper. He knocked it loose and then got teased to touch it before it went out. And Michael Cooper is fired up. Good ball handling skills, but as you said, Nick, big heart, emotional ball player out on the floor. Heard the Atkins. He'll shoot short, and they call the foul. Well, they call it on Bobby Willis, who was Wayman Tisdale's first cousin. Bobby Willis is see Cooper over on the near side here. Keep your eyes. It's going to create the turnover. The free throw line will be Joe Atkins. Atkins at the line. Joe with nine points. Could stretch into double digits here and be the high scorer in the game right now. He's tied with Terrell Anderson. With nine. Six of six from the line. Atkins, Hurd, Tate, as well as some other juniors like Ryan Humphrey and Terrell Hill all play summer ball in the AAU for Oklahoma City. Restaurant owner Johnny Williams. Johnny's coached some guys like Wayman Tisdale, Mark and Brent Price, Stacey Keene, Byron Houston, Richard Dumas, John Starks, Tracy Moore, Kevin Pritchard, all of whom have played in the NBA. You think these guys have a chance to get there, although it's a little bit early. Taylor's back in the game and he scores just as quickly. 24 to 20, Marshall. That's Derek Taylor's bread and butter down low right underneath. An area about 10 by 10 feet. Put him at the free throw line, it's been a tough struggle for him, but down low, he's up good. Three guard look by Marshall. Spinning inside and scoring is Damian Mitchell. Gives Marshall more of a wide body look. Six different bears in the scoring column here in the first half. Keys. McLean doing an excellent job of spreading out the floor on offense, getting those points in the paint. They're playing a box 
and one defensively. Heard, nothing doing, stolen. And a quick foul by Cooper. May have saved a basket as William Johnson had open floor. William Johnson was on the move, Michael Cooper. Side by side with him, creates the infraction. Johnson at the line. Shooting one and one. Wayne needs to step it up at the charity stripe. They need to start to work it. In and out. Strong rebound screaming. by Tate. They have struggled in the first half. What is it they say? There's two things that don't last long. That's dogs that chase cars and teams that don't make free throws. <laughs> I'd have to agree. 26-22, Marshall. Michael Cooper out front. Marshall eats up a little clock. Heard. Nice running rebound by Cooper. Into Heard. He unloads it, but they got to travel. We've got a timeout on the floor. John Marshall enjoying a four-point lead over McLean. Second quarter action. When you change everything and break the rules, you can expect a reaction. We sure got one. Four Dodge nameplates were just named consumers. Marshall, 26. Colson McLean, 22. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, we'll be visited by Sherry Cole, the head coach for the... Girls program at Norman High School. Winners today over Sepulpa. Beat them rather easily, 73 to 35. Of course, the Norman boys. Nick play tonight right here on Channel 5 at 8 o'clock. Taylor couldn't get it in, and Mc McLean has a five-second call on the inbound. So Marshall will get it under their own basket. Tate. Have to add this. Puts up a shot, and he traveled with it. Joe didn't necessarily agree with that call. <laughs> Had a perplexed look on his face, as if I've done that a thousand times. I think Joe gets away with more of those than he thinks. Given the quality ball player that he is. Anderson being guarded by Hurd. William Johnson. Loses it. Out of bounds, and the plane will retain possession. Get a look at Tony Hurd. Flying around the basketball today. Seven points yesterday. He said, headed to OU. Nobody covered Evie Irie, and he got an easy bucket. The plane pulls to within two. Just joining us, McLean led by one after one. Now, they have a two-point deficit. Heard in trouble. Well, it's Cooper. He called the timeout. Cooper drew a double team down low. Mentioned earlier, Nick, coming up tonight at 8 o'clock right here on Channel 5, the boys 6A final, Tulsa, Washington, taking on Norman. What a day it would be for the folks down in Norman if both the girls' teams and boys' teams were victorious as state champions. Of course, Norman squeaked by last night, getting an offensive rebound in the bucket in the final seconds to advance to the finals. And Booker team's the defending champion, and a lot of people are wanting to see that talented ball flip. Once again, great fan support, as there always is, for high school championship action, no matter what the sport. Number of John Marshall fans making the 100-mile drive up from the Oklahoma City area. Saw a few of them on the way up. Have the soap on the windshield. Side windows, don't want to tamper with any type of uh, road debris if you can help it. Beautiful day for a drive up here to the Tulsa area. And what a facility here. Navy Center is uh, theater-esque, to say the least. Twenty-six to twenty-four, Mc Marshall leading McLean. With a minute thirty-nine to play in the first half. 
Pate. Can't get it to fall. Taylor loses it momentarily, but then grabs it. Nice work by McLean to beat the press. Tate tipped it away and wound up on the first row of the bleachers almost. Press almost paid off for John Marshall. Tease will inbound. And now he'll put up the three. Little long. Rebound by Marshall. as heard. He'll take it all the way. No, he dumps it off the Tate. Oh, he fooled me. I thought he'd given up his opportunity to pass and had an open lane. Dumped it off the last second. Terrific move by Tony Hurd to set up Reggie Tate for his ninth and tenth points in the afternoon. Let's take another look at that. Sweet move. Better angle here, Mick. This is the one we needed. No looker. Boy. He sure got e Irie up in the air, didn't he? Oh, the 45, Ebby Irie thought he had committed. Excellent work there on the break. Debbie Irie at the line. He's shooting two. Bridget Tate winning the foul. That's his first. And Irie, seven points. 28 to 25. Marshall in front. Just over a minute to play in the first half. Atkins now with 12 first half points. Tease to Taylor. Can't get the roll. Tipped around. Saved by Tease. Travel. Maybe Irene trying to make a move. Too many steps, however, 35.6 seconds to go here in the first half of play in the boys' 5A state championship game. Hope you're enjoying it. Mark Archibald along with Mick Cornett. Game one of two today. Second. Marshall will play it for one shot if they have the opportunity. Marshall leads by five. They spread the floor. As you see, we're down inside 10. Tate. Inside the Cooper. He unloads it, and the bucket is hit by Damian Mitchell. And that'll do it for the first half. Tommy Griffin's Bears have the lead as they head to the locker room. John Marshall, 32. Tulsa McLean, 25. We'll be back with halftime activities right after this. Marshall on top, 32-25. Mark Ockerblum along with Mick Cornett joined courtside now by Sherry Cole, the victorious coach of the Norman Tigers basketball program, state champions in 6A. Thank you. Terrific day today for your team. Really, not much of a contest against the Pulp, but you pretty much did what you wanted out there. I think we played our best basketball game of the year today, which is how it's supposed to be. Uh, those seniors I have are just incredible. I can't say enough about them. Uh, they were here last year in the semifinals and had their hearts broken. They worked for 364 days and got back here today and won it. And that's why you'll see so much emotion on the bench. Talk us through the last few seconds here. Well, these are our sophomores, and that's Stacy Mantmeyer on the, on the bench there. We subbed in. We were ahead far enough that we were able to get our seniors recognition one by one. That's my assistant coach from last year. And uh, those kids who to be on the floor this year we're a part of what we did we want to make sure they knew that sherry your program has been in the national spotlight it was ranked in usa today how did you keep the kids focused keep them from reading the papers well I, I think you go in every day and you work and play against yourself play against your own performance and that's what we try to do we've done it for two years we have a winning margin of 35 points per game in two seasons and that's night after night of going out and and telling your team, okay, we beat this team by 40 last week, but you've got to get better this week. And you don't do that unless you have mature kids who understand the big picture. And out of those six seniors we have, four will go on and play college basketball. They understand the big picture. And the young kids we have now buy into that. And you get tradition started, and it feeds on itself. All right, we'll be back with more from Sherry Cole and more about the Norman Tiger girls when we get back to the Maybe Center after this timeout. Marshall enjoys a 
seven-point halftime lead over Tulsa McLean. And we're visiting with Sherry Cole, the girls' coach at Norman High School. Stacy Hansmeyer has been a special player for you, and I know you hate to see her graduate and go to the University of Connecticut. Yes, I do, but if she's got to go anywhere, that's a good place for her to go. Extremely um, unique kid. She's character, inside and out, and one of the most enjoyable to be around. She works hard wants to improve her game daily and that's why she has an opportunity to go to Connecticut and be a part of probably a national championship there. I think one thing she can certainly look forward to is the fact that she had great fan support while she played at Norman High School but I can tell you personal testament to the fans in Connecticut they are rabid about Husky basketball whether it's the ladies or the men they fill Gamble Pavilion they go to the Hartford Civic Center huge crowds turn out for those games so the support is fantastic oh it is it's phenomenal and and that's one of the things that stuck out to stacy as she visited and i was fortunate enough to go with her on the trip to connecticut and and experience that the atmosphere is so much like it is both within our program and the support around it she will blossom at the university of connecticut i, I think she's a sleeper I, I know she's a big time player around here but nationally i think she's a sleeper because you can't measure heart and that's what stacy hansmar is about she also is part of a, a team that has a lot of depth. I've, I've heard you talk in the past about the fact that you go beyond this team that starts. You've got players who could start certainly for other teams as well. Oh, without a doubt. And, and that's one of the things that makes Stacy so unique and so special is she could set all kinds of records, scoring records, rebound records, anything she wanted to, but she doesn't get to play that much. She averages 17 minutes a game. That's a little over half a ball game. And while she's in the game, she's our second leading assist player. And she's, a, you know, our, our go-to. And so that tells you a little bit about what she's made of. Personal goals were never a big deal to Stacy. She wanted to win a state championship, and that's why you saw so much emotion from her on the sideline tonight. Sherry, how have you seen high school basketball change since you played at Hilden a few years back? Well, I had to play six on six, and I loved it at the time, but I uh, was fortunate enough to go on and play college basketball. And once you play five on five, there's no comparison. You want to play six on six. I mean, you don't want to play six on six. You want to play five on five. I think every year the game has progressively gotten better. The athletes are better. Everyone's stronger. They're on weight programs. Their endurance is better. I think the skill level is improving. And as the rest of the state has gone to five on five this year, I think it's just going to get better and better. I can tell you from playing Indianola, we have one loss this year. Class 2A, Indianola. Those girls can play some ball. I don't know if people can tell because you're sitting down, but you're eight months pregnant. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, thank you. Actually, my, my doctor will correct you. I'm seven and a half months pregnant. Well, it was a team effort all the way around. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there you see the Norman Tiger girls, 1996 state champions. Thank you, Sherry Cole, for being with us. Mark and I will be back at four. <laughs> In 15 years, I've never seen you eat On Channel 5, Mark Archer, blah, blah, with Mick Cordette. Halftime. Wrapping up in just a few moments. John Marshall on top, 32-25. They trailed after the first quarter of play, 15-14. Let's take a look at some stats. At halftime in just a few moments. But uh, we can tell you that Joe Atkins heard a lot about him. Headed to OSU, leading scorer in the ballgame, Mick, with 12 points. Indeed, Joe Atkins has played extremely well, but, you know, if McLean had hit their share of the free throws, right. this would be a much tighter game. As far as up and down the floor, these teams have played pretty much even. I think that's the way it'll be in the second half. We're just about ready to start the second half. We'll be back after this time up. Second half action starting right now. McLean will inbound the ball. So on man-to-man -man defense, deployed by both teams early on. Looks like they're going to try on that again to start the second half. Pierce found some room inside and scored. Troy Pierce. And Troy Pierce's first two points of the game shut out in the first half. But five of his teammates were not. McLean in the ball game. Down by five. Hurd lets it fly. Can't get it, but Tate's right there. No, it's McLemore on the backside. Mar McLemore with his first points in the ball game. Again, full court pressure. Cheese gets it in to Pierce. McDaniel comes out to play him, man. Pierce gets by him, but runs into McDaniel. Stepped on the out-of-bounds line, and McLean will retain possession. D'Angelo McDaniel, a big block early on in the game, and here he is. Wanting another away right here. All ball. 
Possession, though, goes to McClain. That would be McDaniel's third block of the game. Tease has it strip momentarily, and now for, for sure. Tate to the Atkins, back to Hurd. He slices in and scores. A nine-point bulge now for the Bears. Taylor. Offensive foul. And Taylor's third foul, so he is in trouble along with D'Angelo McDaniel at three in the first half. For John Marshall. Here's some stats. The OGE power stats. Power at the speed of light. 10 of 13 on the free throws for John Marshall. 77%. And as you said, Mick, 3 of 11 for McLean. 27%. That's really the difference in the stats as you look at them at home. Tate. Reggie Tate, a dozen points. Joe Atkins, the same. They are the sharpshooters for Tommy Griffiths. John Marshall Bears have been all season. Marshall's opened up an 11-point lead. Nice shot by Anderson. Oh, Terrell Anderson led the... Also, McLean squad in scoring in the first half with nine, now has 11. Joe can't find the range. Rebound by Tease. Willis going baseline. Through the foul, I believe, on McDaniel. If that is, I believe that's McDaniel's fourth. Daniel is going to come out of the ball game. Damon Mitchell has spotted him well in the first half. Nick comes back in. If you recall, Damon Mitchell scored the final two points in the first half and had four, but contributes in size, rebounding. If he can score a bucket, it's a bonus. Willis at the line. And the free throw shooting woes continue from the flame. Marshall. McLean working the full court press defense. McLemore. Nice rebound by Mitchell. We talked about the play of Damon Mitchell spotting D'Angelo McDaniel. He's done an outstanding job thus far this afternoon. Six points in the ball game. He's controlled the boards underneath, both on the offensive end and defensive end. Keys get the double team. Anderson off the front iron. Rebound and put back is missed. Now a whistle. Willis couldn't hit the shot. Now a foul on John Marshall. Mitchell picks up the foul. But for Damon Mitchell, only his first foul of the ball game. He's been mixing it up down low with Derek Taylor, but. That foul called away. And Taylor. Taylor. He scores and he draws the foul. That time, Mitchell got it. Well, they're going inside. No question about it. They got McDaniel on the bench with four fouls. Now Mitchell's picked up two in a span of about five seconds. Nice job by Taylor to take the hit. And keep his sight set on the basket. Derek Taylor, six foot seven senior. Off the front iron, he missed it. As you saw, struggled in the line. 0 for 5 this afternoon. Long pass to Hurd. Slices in and scores off the glass. I'll tell you, get out in the open floor and run with John Marshall. You're not going to win. You're going to come up second every time. Taylor leads the break. Dumps off to Pierce. And they call a foul on Hurd, I believe. Taylor was slicing through. Number 
No, it's Mitchell picking up his third foul here in about one minute span. Well, that could prove to could have been a costly down the way here. D'Angelo McDaniel on the bench with four fouls and his backup, Damian Mitchell, with three now. 4.46 to go in the third quarter. But again, the story has been the foul shooting and the lack thereof by the Scots from Tulsa McLean. They have struggled to no end. And Luther Pagese is visibly perturbed at his team's lack of free throw shooting. Second one goes in. It's 42-33. Third working on Pease. Well, the point guard position has become so physical at this level of basketball. Joe thinks about shooting, drives around, puts up the running shot short, fight for the rebound, and McLean controls. Anderson thinks about giving it up to a guard, then slices through and gets it to Taylor, who jams it home. The McLean crowd's on its feet, 42-35. Got it to an in seven. Derek Taylor trying to fire him up with a stuff inside. Marshall going to look for the best basket here. They're going to slow it down a little bit. They have a foul away from the ball. I believe it's on Mitchell Anderson. And Anderson were mixing it up, and they call Anderson for the foul. Here's Anderson with the dish. Great look. And Taylor, no doubt about it. 42-35, Marshall. center in Tulsa. John Marshall Bears with a seven-point lead. Tulsa McLean trying to jump back into it. Reduce the deficit to seven right there on the jam inside from Derek Taylor. Nice pass and assist going to Terrell Anderson. Those numbers say a lot about this 42 to 35 score. Ball is knocked away. Marshall retains possession. Derek Taylor defending down low. Got a hand on it. Knocked it out in front of the table, in front of us right here. Tate's got it. Looking for an entry pass. Nothing there. Drives himself. Shoots. Count it! Oh, the unselfish Reggie Tate took it upon himself that time to go inside and bang it home. Foul is going to be called on Troy Pierce. That's his third. He and Taylor with three fouls apiece. Tate at the line, he's got a game high 14 points, can make it 15. Tate, the quarterback on the football team that won the state championship. Get it, he looks behind him to look for Justin Matthews at all. <laughs> I would imagine Justin is somewhere in the maybe center today. Quite a few of the members of the football team here, obviously uh, reciprocating the cheers. Incredible feat to have your football and basketball team both go undefeated in the same season. Pease didn't get it in. Excellent defense by John Marshall. John Marshall enjoying its biggest lead of the ball game at 10 points. At the Joe's been quiet in the second half. Tate, oh, what an acrobatic shot, but he missed. You very rarely score when you shoot when you're on the way down. Anderson. Taylor, backside rebound and put back. Derek Taylor knows he's got to get a little more room underneath, especially with Damon Mitchell with playing with three fouls. And he's going to take full advantage of the offensive end. 45-37. Marshall's lead cut to eight. Bounce pass to Hurd, who finds some room and draws a foul. There you see the pass over in the corner. Anderson won't get it to drop. But look who's knocking. Derek Taylor down low. Easy put back for him. He's now got 10 points to join Anderson in double digits. Anderson with 11. But it's the Bears free throw shooting, which has helped their cause immensely today. Tony Hurd. Cashing in that time. 
Kurt is a great competitor, plays the point guard spot for Marshall. Be playing at Oklahoma next year. We hit them both. 47-37. Marshall by 10. The line expanded this lead with D'Angelo McDaniel sitting on the bench. For a good part of it. Taylor's got it again. Turn around Jay. Can't get it to fall. Rebound by Hurd. Pumps it off. <laughs> and what a finish. Damian Mitchell had a gift basket with an easy layup. Excellent job by Hurd of drawing the attention and dumping it off at the last second. You're not kidding. You know, when you're the guy who puts the ball in the hoop after a play like that, such as Damian Mitchell, you almost feel guilty. Atkins knocked it out of bounds. There you see the pass. Heard to Mitchell. Splits two defenders, curls it underneath. And hit him right Mitchell in the chest right there. With it. Yeah. Right there where it was easy to catch. And if, at that juncture of the break, you don't have time to reach down or reach up to catch it. It's now 12 point John Marshall lead. Well, this is a far cry from where they were yesterday, Nick. Team that didn't have the lead throughout the entire regulation play. John Marshall back in a familiar territory here with a 12 point advantage. Willis can't get it to fall. Williams rushed for it. Lazy pass and it's intercepted. Tate. Mitchell spinning, shoot, score. Danny Mitchell now with 10 points, including six in the second half. He came in to help out a foul. Marshall got Daniel it by 14. McDaniel. the big man underneath now as far as the scoring goes and they've got Anderson with a block Anderson with his third foul well, Mitchell's playing well Mark as you mentioned David Mitchell all alone underneath back to the basket and a spin around right here you see Derek Taylor last second there flying through the air but Mitchell gets the ball to drop 10 points David Mitchell he has been one of the many stories for John Marshall here this afternoon. Mitchell again. This time it's rejected. Williams is open, but Marshall recovered in time. Foul called on Tate. Joe Atkins with 12 points in the first half. He has been shut out thus far in the third quarter. We got about a minute and nine to go. Thus far, John Marshall has not needed the point production from Joe Atkins here in the second half. He's had some opportunities, but has uh, always passed off. More good defense by John Marshall. On the move that time, Tony Hurd. Johnson wide open, could have gone right through the back door and couldn't hold on to the basketball. Turnover, John Marshall will take it. Inside a minute to play in the third. Here you see the Scots with 16 turnovers for just 10 for the Bears. Last few seconds of the third quarter, Marshall appears to be headed for a one-shot opportunity. This will be the third time that they have had this opportunity at the end of the period. Cashed in one of two just before the half. Mitchell would have asked it. Atkins penetrating past the timeline. And back. Dumps it off the tape. Foul backside. <laughs> Great pass by Atkins. They skidded along the rim that time, and a big hand came over his back, and that belonged to this man right here. Heavy Irene kept him from getting the basket, but Tate will go to the line. Like 
Adkins and Tate had run that little play before. Reggie Tate, game's leading scorer with 15 points at 27 yesterday, putting 19 in the second half. Leaves it short. And Tommy wonder, Griffin looks like he's saying, just follow through, follow through. I wonder if fatigue won't become a factor at some stage of this game. Marshall has not substituted all that much. Tate hits the second one. 13 point lead, a long shot by McLean. And don't think uh, McLean knew exactly how much time was left as they let the shot fly a little early. We still got 1.7 left. Not out of the realm of possibility that Marshall can't get one more shot off here. Here they're going to go for it. McLemore let one fly off the shot clock. John Marshall's fans are rising to their feet. They're eight minutes away from a potential state championship. Stay with us from the Maybe Center. The fourth quarter is coming up next. Only Brown. makes a hot fudge sundae with rich and creamy Brahms ice cream. We smother it in thick hot fudge and more hot fudge. Sprinkle with toasted almonds, add whipped cream and a cherry, and you've got a hot fudge sundae the way we make them. Only at your neighborhood Brahms. When you change everything and break the rules, you can expect a reaction. We sure got one. Sales records got shattered. So we're celebrating our best sales... This Best Buy, Dodge Intrepid. Intrepid has more passenger room, power, and equipment standard than Ford Taurus. And even before $1,500 in cash savings or 1.9% financing, it's also a better... And welcome back. Obviously a fan of Troy Pierce over on the Tulsa McLean. Sideline, the OG&E Electric Services power stats for you. And again, the free throws. 5 of 16 for McLean, 14 of 18. For John Marshall, that's been really the difference, bat and turnovers in this ballgame. McLean gets a turnover to start the fourth quarter. No one's hit a three-point shot in this game, and that's unusual. Anderson can't get it. Taylor with the power board and a bucket. Derek Taylor, 14 points, team high right now, and he'll go to the line trying to add to it. Derek Taylor. 6'7", senior, used this size very well and realizes that the fellow big men that he's going up against are in foul trouble. And he has exploited that down low. A couple schools he's looking at, Colorado, Arizona, and also Tulsa. And I imagine some Division I schools will be getting a copy of this broadcast. He has had trouble with the line, though. He has not made a free throw this afternoon. I believe, Nick, he is 0 for 6. That has been confirmed in the box. So, defense, one area of his game to left to work on. But as we talked about earlier, in about a 10 by 10 foot box down low, he is dangerous. McLemore. There goes Taylor, picking up a big defensive board. 52 41. Marshall leading early minutes of the fourth quarter. You're watching the 5A state championship game in Tulsa, Oklahoma. McLean gets the ball back. Tony Hurd shaking his head, saying it should be white ball. Shots will take possession. Quick inbounds to Williams, and he scores. William Johnson. Well-designed play, well-executed play. A little room for error, and they cashed in. And it's down inside, 10 points now, 9-point lead. But John Marshall, Joe Atkins, he's been shut out in the second half. Hard to believe. Atkins dribbles from about 15 inches off the ground. Drives, takes it upon himself to shoot, gets his own rebound and puts it back in. Oh, Terrific play by Atkins. Terrific athleticism. He got up there and got his own rebound. Mick, as you said, on the follow, gets the basket. Controlled the tip beautifully. That's called dexterity, folks. We'll see it again right here. He works on William Johnson, goes over Taylor, and then back up. Beats Taylor to the ball. Messes it home. Tease wings it over to William. 
Williams can't get it to fall. A fight for the board, and Joe's got it. We should mention, Hankins cut out until that basket right there, but he was contributing in a number of ways, both defensively and offensively. Picked up a few assists along the way as well. Tate looks at Damian and drives in himself. Pushes off and scores off the glass. Count the bucket. And the fourth, the foul will be on Derek Taylor. That's his fourth. Well, I believe they called the foul on William Johnson. It looked, I had William Johnson as being called for the foul, but then the PA system had said Derek Taylor, so. Well, some miscommunication. In fact, the scoreboard here put up Troy Pierce, as that was the foul called on him. I thought Johnson was the player that went down after taking the bump. Well, we'll check it out. 57-43, Marshall leading in the fourth quarter of the state championship game. Uh, they're going to call it on Troy Pierce. Okay. Pierce officially goes down with that last foul. Marshall with a long rebound. McLemore in trouble. That's stolen. Behind the back pass delivery. A little bit blind, but they paid off. Nice play by Johnson to keep it alive. Johnson takes his man, but gives it up. T for three. Can't get it. Great tip. Shot and missed by Anderson. As Taylor controlled the bouncing rebound and kept it alive. Derek Taylor controlled a couple rebounds right there. We get a timeout on the floor. John Marshall on top, 57, 43, 513 to go. Boys, 5A state championship game. TV center, John Marshall with a 57 to 43 lead over Tulsa McLean Scott. Marshall lost in the finals a year ago in command of this championship game. Taylor, wheeling and dealing, putting it up with the left hand. Short, we got a foul. McLean scoring coming inside. Taylor nails this one. If you just joined us and you're looking for D'Angelo McDaniel, Marshall's outstanding sophomore, he got in foul trouble early and has not returned. Damian Mitchell has done an admirable job in his stead. It's 57-45. Marshall with a 12-point lead. Just over five minutes to play. Mitchell. Has it blocked by Taylor? They're going to whistle the foul. And that'll be the fourth foul on Derek Taylor, who finally broke his scoreless string at the line. But now he's got four fouls, just as D'Angelo McDaniel. But we have but 4.51 to go in the game, and he's blocking over. Luther Pegues sitting down, hasn't signified. Apparently he's going to stay in the ball game right now. And Damon Mitchell at the line, 10 points in the ball game. He had six and a crucial run there in the third quarter. Bends down like Atkins to shoot those free throws. Eleven points for Mitchell. Taylor with an easy layup. Derek Taylor ties the game high now with Reggie Tate, 18 points. Marshall trying to protect the lead, and they are guard heavy. Makes it especially tough for a team to come back on them.
keep it here following the game. We talk with some of the participants and bring you the celebration. <laughs> Four different attempts there for John Marshall. And McLean, check that Mitchell will go to the line. It's called the foul on Fran T. You know, Mark, a lot has been made about fundamental basketball disappearing from high school ranks. A lot of kids just want to go out and shoot threes at practice. Not a single three made here in the championship game. It shows when it comes to the championship game, fundamentals came back to the top. Mitchell. 13 points now. John Marshall resting comfortably over on their bench. 13 point lead inside four minutes to play. Tease for three. Taylor fighting for the rebound, but he's out jumped at the last second by Adkins. Hard in trouble. Got a foul and insult to injury as Anderson is in a little bit of pain on the near side. Picking up the defensive pressure. We'll see the foul. Tulsa McLean is 0 of 11 in three-point shooting in this ballgame. Terrell Anderson, his fourth foul. He joins Derek Taylor with four, and also Troy Pierce with four. One and done for those three. One more. Tony Hurd, steady game. He's now got 10 points. And another. 15 point lead for Marshall. Four players in double figures for Marshall. Atkins, Tate, Hurd, and Mitchell. Partially blocked, rebound Tate. You'd Macklemore got a first three, Nick, but certainly Mitchell. That's icing on the cake for the Bears today. Hurd has it stripped. Willis. Tate did not contest it. Atkins can bring it down court. Breaks it all the way, coast to coast. Yeah. Call him Little Joe, and he can score from anywhere on the Ponderosa. <laughs> that time he scored inside. McLean still pacing with the basketball, 2.45 to go, and they trail by 15, but there's their first three-pointer of the afternoon. And there's a three. Derek Taylor knocks it down, and well, he should, as he leads the team in scoring with 21. Jerry Taylor has really picked it up, but Atkins broke the press single-handedly on this one. Saw himself uncontested. Taylor's in foul trouble and couldn't stop him. And Atkins gets the bucket. And then there's Taylor trying to impress the Division I scouts who might be looking at this tape. Shows that he can put it down. That's a pretty good shot for a guy that's six foot seven. Officially for Derek Taylor. Familiar spot for Tony Hurd. Six for six. And the free throw line this afternoon. Tommy Griffin speaking so loudly I can hear his strategy. He's saying every time set up for the fast break. He has been walking that sideline, towel in hand. All game long. Sixty-six, fifty-two. Three-point attempt is in and out by William Johnson, but Taylor's there for the putback. Mclemore drawing trouble and picks up a foul on by Willis. Tommy Griffin has won two previous state championships when he was coaching at Classen High School. 
This will be his first since taking over the John Marshall program. This year's team 27-0 heading into this championship out. Assistant coaches Maurice Daniels, Alan Lumpkins, Mike Prandy. Principal Mrs. V. Cooks. Tamar McLemore. Free throw is long. the second one 67 McLean 18 and 8 heading into this game Luther Tegui's assistant coaches Joe Sheets and Ruben Lewis in and out by Teron Tees rebound Tony Hurd dumps it off to Cooper who's fouled going to the hoop to the University of Oklahoma next season as a point guard. Capping off a brilliant high school career. No doubt headed for more success down in Norman. Speaking of Norman, I want to remind you, coming up at 8 o'clock tonight, the boys 6A final, Tulsa, Washington, taking on Norman for that championship. In case you missed it earlier today, championship in a 27-1 season. Congratulations to Coach. Halftime of the entire squad. William Johnson can't get it to fall. Here's misses the putback. Mitchell grabs the rebound. Elbows are flying and a foul is called on Taran Keyes. Talked an awful lot this afternoon about Damon Mitchell. Here's a guy who didn't have a point in yesterday's game. The 6'4 senior with 13 thus far in this his final high school game. Great opportunity to excel right here. Reggie Tate leading the Bears in scoring with 18 points. And Nick alluded to earlier, the quarterback on the football team, undefeated. Well, and Mark, you know, those two statistics, should Marshall go on to win this game? Undefeated in football as the quarterback, undefeated in basketball when you had a major role. He's got to go down as one of the all-time great high school athletes the state has ever produced because no one has ever played on a team that went undefeated in both sports in the same year. Tate is a Division I basketball recruit. Or Roberts in Wichita State among the schools who are seeking his services. And Oklahoma showing some interest. I'm going to say it'd be interesting to see who shows interest after a game like this today. Mitchell with 14 points now. Michael Cooper almost coming up with the steal that time. McLean looking for a three. Now they dip it inside to Taylor. A foul. He'll shoot two. Now with a 14-point lead, Vic, 124 to go. Some teams might relax it a bit on the defensive end, but certainly not John Marshall. They've been scrapping the whole time. Here. Well, Mitchell has fouled out. What a great performance in his final high school game. He came off the bench and delivered some power inside as Marshall, apparently on his way to the title, and the talented sophomore, D'Angelo McDaniel, comes back into the game. The embrace with his coach, Tommy Griffin, 14 points, four or six from the line. A number of rebounds as well, and Damian Mitchell wraps up a brilliant career in the John Marshall Bears. Okay. <laughs> Taylor left the ball. Bounce over his shoulder. He didn't even turn around. He was concentrating so hard on the rim right now. I think he spent some time in the weight room. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Probably spend a little bit more. He's still a little bit busy. As they say. Got the roll in the second. 68-55. Cooper. Tate. Joe Adkins. Almost got a deflection, but 
gets his own rebound, misses. D'Angelo misses. Willis fights for the rebound and picks up a foul as Cooper hit him on the arm. Going down the score, he played 15 14 after one in favor of Tulsa McLean. But at halftime, it was 32 25 John Marshall, 52 39 John Marshall after three quarters of play. And currently, they lead it with a minute nine to go at 68 to 55. Well, John Marshall, believe it or not, is beatable, but the team's got to play extremely well. McLean did not hit its outside shots, did not shoot well from the free throw line. And when you're not doing those things, you're not going to beat John Marshall. And you uh, see how. Good Tulsa Central must have played yesterday to keep this John Marshall team from having a lead in regulation. Mm -hmm. Relying on two free throws late in the ball game, a controversial call to set up those free throws. And Bears took advantage, moved it into overtime, won the game, and came out and played a strong ball game today. And are wrapping up a 28 no season. Willis hits the free throw, and a timeout is called by Luther Pegues, who wants to go over some last minute strategy down 11 with a minute nine to play championship saturday here in the state of oklahoma nick a number of programs wrapping up outstanding seasons and don't forget one more game coming up tonight here on channel five and i i'm glad you reminded me of that because we want to graduate congratulate star spencer who won the 4a boys title today johnny johnson with his seventh state title for the spartans I don't believe any coach has ever won that many titles. So congratulations, Johnny. I hope you're watching our telecast and will join us tonight at 8 o'clock for the 6A game. Great fan spirit. High school athletics, something we see time and time again. I know I have seen it both the Northeast and here in the Midwest. It follows you wherever you go. Parents, classmates, family and friends all supporting the cause. Marshall will inbounds the ball. Atkins the trigger man. Tate takes off long to completion. See if he can do anything with it. Now, Taylor was right there defensively, and he wisely set up. Quick foul by Teran Tease. They put Tony Hurd at the line. Tony Hurd with 13 points in the ball game, and just an outstanding effort. One of many on the part of the John Marshall Bears today, and he'll go to the line. Terrell Anderson comes back in. Well, Anderson make hot start, nine points, two in the third quarter. Nine and a half, two in the third quarter. He has no points here in the fourth quarter. That's one of the scores. And there is Gail Griffin, Tommy's wife. He will no doubt celebrate the third championship of the family. Willis. High rebound by Cooper. And a quick foul. Boy, McLean has been ice cold from the outside. And again, we'll be talking with members of the John Marshall squad at the conclusion of the game. Of course, they're going to be fed for quite a while as they are bestowed the hardware and the like. Terrell Anderson with a seat on the bench. Strong ball game from him this afternoon. Tulsa McLean, the Scots will finish their season at 18 and 9. As we mentioned time and time again, John Marshall will improve to 28 and 0. Michael Cooper gets the roll. Tommy Griffin's doing a lot of coaching for a guy that's got a 14-point <laughs> lead and less than a minute to play. He gave every player some instructions about how to handle this situation. 
Another three-point attempt by McLean. This one is short. Irie couldn't find the range. Heard switches hands to avoid contact. And they fouled it. Massive substitution taking place on the John Marshall side. And they're starting to celebrate on the near side of the stands. And a class move by Tommy Griffin to bring in all his players here. They were like caged up animals ready to get into the uh, basketball <laughs> game. You see them leap as soon as they said, all right, let's go. They jumped to the floor. They're ready to go. Yeah, that's right. Five guys that hadn't broken sweat, couldn't wait to get into this ball game. <laughs> Lots of hugs taking place on that side of the court. Atkins and Hurd and McDaniel, the kids that have been through so much. Team that is spotlighted in the USA Today poll for outstanding high school programs across the country. And well, keep in mind, they have a victory over Tulsa, Washington, who we'll see tonight in the 6A Finals. Those kids will have memories that last a lifetime. Part of an undefeated team. Perfection is hard to come by in sports at any level. And they're going to enjoy it. McLean has done some substituting as well. As both coaches letting everyone take a chance at the state championship game. Long shot put up and in. Carlton Cowens hit the first three of the day for McLean. Less than 10 seconds to play. Marshall running out the clock. It's all over. John Marshall has pulled off the double. Championship in basketball to go with the title in football. Celebration at the Navy Center. Griffin trying to gather his troops. 71-60, the final score as John Marshall claims the 1996 5A state basketball title. An undefeated star. All the great things you've given us. We thank you for these players that have been on our team because they've been wonderful. We thank you for the ability that they had. We want we want to let you know that we love you and we praise you and we thank you. Thank God for helping us to be here and being the 5A state champion. Amen. heard of high school teams talking about the gold ball and that is the trophy of which they are referring silver ball goes to the runner-up McLean Scotts the gold ball will go to Marshall we'll be back with the presentation after this Back at the Maybe Center, where John Marshall has wrapped up a 71-60 victory in the state championship game. Tulsa McLean receiving its awards for finishing up a fine season. 18 wins and 9 losses, and a, a loss to undefeated Marshall in the finals. Let's listen in to some of the festivities. Junior Curtis Childs. Senior Bobby Willis. <laughs> Junior Terrell Anderson. Freshman Dion McKinney. Junior Randy Samuels. Yeah. 
senior Troy Pierce. Freshman Evie Erie. Senior Derek Taylor. Coach Piggies at the state tournament and he will bring a basketball team with him. This was no exception in 1996. Another outstanding job of coaching. We'd like to present him with the academic achievement or the athletic achievement award this time. And now for the runner-up trophy. Would the McLean Scots come forward and receive their runner-up championship trophy for 1996? Ladies and gentlemen, your 1996 Class 6A boys, rather Class 5A boys, runner-up, the Tulsa McLean Career Academy Scots. Now we would like to honor the 1996 State 5A champion from John Marshall. The Bears have had a remarkable athletic season this year, going undefeated and winning the state football championship in the fall, and coming back and winning the state basketball championship undefeated. Congratulations go to Coach Tommy Griffin, a coach who would not accept anything but the best from his players, players who responded, met every challenge, during the season and completed a perfect year being 28 and zero. Let's, let's honor the John Marshall Bears at this time. Would the state champion John Marshall Bears step forward and receive your award as your name is called. The senior, Reggie Tay. <laughs> Junior, Michael Cooper. Senior Tony Hurd. Freshman Michael Bird. Freshman Stephen Gaines. Senior Joe Atkins. Sophomore R.C. Williams. Senior Perry German. Sophomore Julius Jones. Junior Joseph Williams. Senior Tamer McLemore. Arnie Lasky. Sophomore Jimmy Lawson. Senior Damian Mitchell. Angelo McDaniel. Coach Griffin, would you come forward and receive your plaque for leading this state championship ball club in 96? We would also like to present to you, Coach Griffin, the championship Rawlings basketball from your trophy case. 
And now the most important thing, let's present the championship trophy to the 96 Bears. Ladies and gentlemen, your 1996 state champion, John Marshall Bears. Marshall has laid down the law and won the 1996 title. More from Tulsa after this. For a good night's sleep, come to Matthew. of splendid players, Mark. All right, thank you very much, Mick. We're uh, courtside as you take a look at the uh, team, taking its picture, but we've got a number of players with us right now. And first of all, let's just talk about what it means to be 28 and 0. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. We worked hard all year. We feel that we deserved it. Coach, let's bring you on in. Your third championship, but certainly when you have a team that goes undefeated and plays the game they played today, you've got to be delighted. Well, we really are. We're, I tell you what, it's more than delight. We've been blessed to get good athletes, and these kids are really, uh, these men are really good. I mean, they're, they're like, like my own sons. I love them. I chew them out. We laugh. We cry together. But, you know, this is right now is one of those times where we've laughed more than we've cried. Last year, we cried more than we laughed, as far as a year ago. But uh, they deserve it. They really do. And uh, all the credit belongs to these kids. All the credit belongs to them. You can certainly spread the credit around for this team, especially when it goes 28-0. And Damian Mitchell, you're today. One of your players in foul trouble. You stepped to the floor, came up with 14 points. A great way to go out your senior year. Yeah. Uh, I'm just glad they accepted me back. You know, happy to be back. We worked hard. They worked hard. Deserve. Enjoy it and savor the moment, huh? Okay, and Joe Atkins headed to OSU next year to cap off an outstanding high school basketball career. Yeah, we just came and we worked hard all year and all season long. We was waiting for this moment and when the moment came, we were just blessed to win the game. Did you get the sense yesterday when you forced overtime with the free throws, you won that game that you just couldn't be stopped today? Uh, we just, we kept telling ourselves we came too far to lose. Everybody thought we were the best team. Joe Atkins, congratulations. Good luck in your college career at OSU. Thank you. There you have it, Mick. A delighted and jubilant team. They're going to no doubt be celebrating long into the night. Undefeated in both basketball and football. John Marshall Bears. Winners today, 71 to 60, as they enjoy their Kodak moment. We want to thank the Oklahoma Secondary Schools Activity Association. Producer Andy Rubin, Mel Elsie, and his ton of production staff. Statistician Michael Cornett. John Marshall has become the first school ever to be undefeated in football and basketball. Join us tonight at 8 o'clock for the Class 6A title game between Norman and Tulsa's Booker T. Washington High School. For Mark Ockerblue, this is Mick Cornett saying so long from the Baby Center in Tulsa.